Uh, notice how, like, this, like, uh, section only has, like, two paragraphs? So, anyway. Freedom of the press. Freedom of the press is a foundation to our nation. President Biden is committed to, like, safeguarding it. That's why he has, like, called for the immediate and unconstitutional release of journalists who have been, like, locked up abroad for doing their jobs. Hold on! Hold on! Let me stop here. Now, let me say this. I have issues with Julian Assange. He support Gamergate, or he was in favor of Gamergate, or like Gamergate, and so that. So that's one knock against Julian Assange. Uh, but also, there's probably some like sexual assault allegations against Julian Assange, which is why he was in the Ecuadorian prison and as well too, because uh, um, not what the U.S. what uh, USA wanted to like arrest Julian Assange for, but I think like Sweden wanted to arrest Julian Assange for. So. I'm going to assume that, like, you probably should not be in the room alone with Julian Shaw, especially you're a woman or a fan folk as well, too. Oh, or just watch out. Huh. So with that all said, all Julius Assange did is that he released documents of war crimes that are committed in Iraq by, like, American soldiers that was provided to him by Chelsea Manning. In United States of America, President Trump Barack Obama and Biden wanted to extradite like Julian Sons back to the USA so it can be tried. So I'm calling bullshit on like how they do not uh, how they don't want uh, they're going to fight uh, on this sort of thing too. Yeah, they they'll probably will like call for the immediate and uncut just reach the journalists been like been locked up abroad for doing their jobs unless they don't like what the journalists are reporting on or like issuing like the uh, as well too like when USA doing war crimes like Julian Sean said all he did was publish those papers. So, I'm sure they're serious about this sort of thing for, like, journalists doing uh, other things, too. But there's limits to that. So, let's continue on. Uh, he's taken action to, like, combat crimes against journalists and uh, strengthen security for independent media outlets and provide legal support for, like, investigated journalists uh, around the world. Yeah, the, basically... The USA wants to do crimes against journalism. No, you sh others should not be doing crimes against journalism. We want to do crimes against journalism. Again, Julius Sons. That's the example I point to. Continue on. And his administration brought together a coalition to counter proliferation and misuse of, like, a uh, commercial spyware. Okay. Uh, uh, but there was, like, another image that looked in, in my head about commercial spyware as well, too. I thought it was, like, a like CIA developed spyware that, like, somehow became commercial or something like that. But, no, they're referring to, like, spyware, like, malware and that sort of thing, too. Um, Or, I think. Yeah. It's about, oh, yeah, or author's oh, commercial spyware where it's just, like, people can, like, download the app on, like, their partner's phones and be able to find their partner or something like that. Oh, that, that's, that's terrible, honestly, too. But, anyway... Um, Democrats reject Trump's uh, de de denunciation of the free press and recognize its importance to our society. Maybe we will strengthen like media ownership of rules and uh, direct like federal antitrust agencies to investigate media mergers. Harris pushing back on the uh, potential like harm uh, effects of like corporate consolidation. <laughs> but like, Disney was still able to buy off Fox and like uh, Sprint got merged with like Team Mobile. So it's like I, I, I doubt that honestly. I mean. And we will appoint an independent media professional to, like, uh, head the United States, the U.S. Uh, agency for global media. I mean, from some from part as well, too, like, the AP and, like, NPR kind of seem to be independent enough as well, too. Oh, I don't know what the funding the AP has as well, too. And, uh, but the NPR does seem the, I kind of, I listened to the NPR politics uh, podcast and I kind of like, uh, I went somewhere there talking talk about uh, how they talk about like uh, Trump in ways, like uh, talk about him with some uh, airs of legitimacy, essentially. Hey, or other kind of factors as well too, but at least it, it it does seem like the NPR is kind of like independence able to report on things, even if they're the things that they report on is something the administration doesn't like. So at least there's that. Anyway, only two paragraphs for the Freedom and Press, but I guess there's not much to talk about the Freedom and Press other than acknowledge that they're for the Freedom and Press. But now, arts and humanities. America is a great nation in large part because of the power of the arts and humanities that's embedded in the DNA of America. I thought that what makes America a great nation is uh, like Cedric Lowe's and... Uh, yeah, 
exactly, Kane. That's another great example about the freedom that press. Uh, Israel did not shut down Al Jazeera or anything like that. Yeah. Talk about, like, uh, crimes against journalism abroad or something like that. How about that, United States of America? How about that, your ally, Israel, bombing Al Jazeera and shutting down Al Jazeera? Preventing them from reporting on, like, the Palestinian genocide. But no, nope, nope, nope. Oh, they will come. Nope, nope, nope. Nah, it's like... Israel has a right to defend themselves, as Kamal Harris says. Anyway, continuing on. Uh, the administration has taken historical actions to support the arts, uh, helping libraries, uh, theaters, uh, concert halls, and other venues to stay afloat during the pandemic. No, honestly, uh, libraries as well as like theaters and concert halls would like to be able to stay afloat as well, too. I think that some theaters and concert halls were able to like uh, they somehow stay afloat because they were able to like stream the like performances as well, too, during pandemic. And I think that is a cool thing to do. Um, and I think like some concerts can definitely be like performed with like social distancing as well too, um, or at least just like give those like uh, places money so they can like you know like uh pay people to like stay at home and like uh, keep owning those like, places so like when the pandemic was over that people come back and come back to those things as well too, and libraries should always uh, say be around like they continue funding to the libraries and like they get the funding uh, uh, libraries want and want that they're like, just like on, uh, an amazing resource for like the community. Continue on. The administration has strengthened the National Endowments for the Arts Institute of Museum and Library Services and the National Endowment of Humanities. President Biden also reestablished the Presidential Committee on the Arts and the Humanities and designed an executive order to, protect, uh, to make more arts more accessible to the people from un, un, underserved. How about this? I was almost said undeserving. I almost read that as undeserving, and I thought, wow, President Biden, wow, Democrats, undeserving? No, no, underserved. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, uh, okay, undeserved. Okay, I know what you mean now. Okay. Um, but my neuroplasty brain misread underserved. Um, uh, okay, continue on. Uh, art more accessible to people from underserved uh, communities. Uh, Elevate uh, new voices through the arts and humanities and expand the opportunities for like artists and scholars. He has to celebrate and elevated the arts by like uh, hosting in performances and screening. It has like rewarded national humanities medals, national medals of arts, and uh, hosted the community Kennedy Center's uh, honorees at the White House. Uh, Democrats value the humanities, arts, and arts education for developing imagination, creativity, innovation, creative thinking, and for building bridges within and like between our communities. We will promote arts funding and education, and we will invest in the arts and humanities accordingly. Democrats will fund the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for Humanities, Arts and Music Education in Public Schools. Democrats note that by federal grants of cultural organizations, uh, artists, uh, scholars, uh, libraries, uh, systems, museums, and state and local like governments only strengthen our communities uh, and cult our cultural heritage. You know, I just like remember something, uh, like how it speaks about like uh, the public funding for arts and humanities and like um, public schools as well too. Um, my drama teacher, uh, when I was in high school, um, was honored in the, uh, the local scene with a golden apple, so she also got a grant. Uh, because of like, uh, oh, no, I think she was a sep exceptional like a uh, drama teacher, and she was also director of all the like uh, musicals and like plays production and stuff like that. I was lucky to be in at least one of them, only one unfortunately. I, I auditioned for a lot of them too, but I was only like a uh, on the cast for one, and I was on, like a uh, part of the production of another one, but I was like a stagehand basically. Uh, I was just like handing out a prop. Uh, in one scene, that's it. I was in the background, and, and but like, she when she like accepted her Golden Apple Award on local television, um, in PBS, she one thing she like talked about is that when public schools have to cut funding for things in order to, because of budget constraints, why is it always the arts that are first to cut? Sports are probably like the last things ever cut. They've never, like, uh, cut sports. And even, like, my middle schools had, like, uh, the football team and the uh, soccer teams and, like, uh, the uh, track and field teams and all the teams, too. Um, and even in middle school, the, the middle school football team played against other middle school football teams as well, too. Yeah, that's the thing. Sports makes money. Even high school sports makes money, which is, like, 
because it did sometimes uh, high school sports are uh, shown on local television and like high school sports so like the championship for an in high school sports leagues is like shown on like local television as well too and no, no i agree Kane. yeah you're right that is the reason like like in sports are rarely cut but the arts do not but like I think also if like one thing I think if like the Democrats are serious about the arts and humanities as well too and protecting and ensuring arts and humanities too, we also got to like figure out a way for like because there's always a stigma against like arts or like art history or those are kind of uh, the other non STEM field degrees is like well how are you going to make money on that? And to be clear, uh, uh, it's uh, I'm not anti-sport. I'm just very pro arts and humanity. I agree, Kate. Oh yeah, I agree, Kate. No, no, no. I, I mean, I jogged like five kilometers yesterday in the heart of uh, walk, uh, run walk too. And like, no, there. I do agree. There's like a lot of benefits for like sports teams as well too. For like, uh, basically, um, uh, keeping uh, uh, students engaged as well too. Because like, you cannot just be on the football team and have terrible grades. You have to keep your grades up in order to be on the football team. So it's like one way to kind of encourage people to like uh, keep studying, and keep the grades up, and, and keep in attendance. It's really hard for like uh, collegiate athletes, honestly, because they have to keep up with their studies as well as like perform. Um, on um, there are like uh football teams as well too and it's how college the sports is like big money for like the college football and college basketball is like it's ridiculous especially since how those athletes are not paid it, and there's a whole host of issues with that too um but yeah it's like artists i this i think this is personal for me i think in, in ncaa athletes should uh, get paid i agree kane um, because like a lot of organizations and the schools themselves, and can, it, it, the coaches have like a six it, it, six figure or even seven figure salaries and something like that for like coaching that like thing. And I think the the athletes should like make a cut and that sort of thing too, because of their work and their labor on the field is what is also making money for like the colleges and universities and with the TV broadcast deals and that and that type of things that sort of thing too. If there's money involved, the athletes should be paid too. Um, and if like other people in like the, um, in the motive productions as well too, like the coaches are getting paid and getting paid very well as well too, there should be like ways for the athletes to be paid too. If they're selling jerseys names with, uh, jerseys with their names on them, it's pretty simple. Exactly. Um, but so I'm guess I'm personally invested in art and humanities as well too, because it, I, yeah, there's there's a, there's a whole discourse in it going around like oh, I dream of labor. What do you dream about when you wanted to grow up? But for me, it's being an actor because like basically the before it's like the answer. If I were to answer the question, what do I want to be when I grow up? It was honestly whatever movie I was watching at the time. I did not see Backdraft, but if I did see Backdraft and like that movie, I would have said I want to be a fireman. I did see the Police Academy movies, and believe it or not, the those movies made me want to be a police officer. Still enjoy Police Academy movies, at least most of them. Um, even though it's been a long time since I've seen them, so maybe there's some like uh, cringy stuff in there too. Um, excuse me. Uh, but it's like if I saw Star Wars, I want to be a Jedi Knight, even though I know Jedi Knight's not an occupation. But that's the thing too. I kind of realized like in middle school. Wait a minute. If I'm an actor, I can be any one of those things too. You know, one time, one day I can be a Jedi Knight if I'm an actor, and another time I can be a police officer if I'm a police officer. As far as I can remember, I always wanted to be like a test pilot and eventually an astronaut. Hey, see, hey, I think I probably want to be that too, probably because I've seen Apollo 13, or I did not see the right stuff. I should, though. Oh, but if I saw a movie... Oh, no, it was Armageddon. <laughs> I was young enough when I saw Armageddon, and like it made being national like look cool, or it also made being national seem be easy because you can just train oil drills to be astronauts as opposed to training astronauts to be to operate a drill. That was a silly, silly, silly movie. Um, but if I'm an actor, I can be like an astronaut as well too. But the reason. Well, there's also some personal reasons. So, like, not want to, like, escape my comfort zone and, like, move to... Hey, I don't know, the first, like, uh, face based movie I saw. Like, play Star Wars. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, I want to be, like, a fighter pilot because of, like, the uh, battle for Yevon Thor in, like, Star Wars. 
I still want if like and it that scene yeah, had like uh, got to eat this food as they were finally ready, so it returns. Hey, what was this video? But that's the thing is the reason why I'm so passionate about the arts and humanities is because I want to be an actor. But the reason why the honest reason I've never fully pursued the acting as a career basically, or it's like support myself by acting is where too I know that it would be hard to do so. I know that like how I would do like bit parts of like commercials would be extras if I'm lucky to get that. I know that like it would struggle to make ends meet, especially if I live in like a very expensive city like Los Angeles and you kinda have to like like live where the work is and in order to like make it make it as an actor as well too but that's also why i'm kind of like so i never pursued uh as career as an acting because i like to eat and i would i've hated to like be destitute and then not be able to like pay rent or be like victim because of that so that's why i never pursued a career in acting but there has to be like something i wish that there was like something to allow people to be able to pursue their passions whether it's art whether it's like theaters where it's like communities where it's like curate for a museum and something like that and and maybe if you work for a museum you can't be paid for that too but for many people it's hard for you to be paid for being artists being paid for being an actor being paid for those things or be able to live off of being paid for being an actor be paid for an artist be paid for like i'm a fan of anime so i've been to anime conventions and the most common question asked to like um uh, voice actors is how do you become a voice actor because like all the a lot of people that are in attendance at the anime convention they wish they can also be a voice actor too they wish they can voice anime too and they think it's like an easy life or it's like the best life possible but yet the truth is like the, like the a lot of those voice actors have to do radio commercials have to like be the voice for like houston star and, and or it's like the um the local hockey team as well too because like you do not make a, a you do not pay mortgages by doing those uh, voice acting for anime because anime uh, compared to video games and cartoon is a uh, yeah it does take a lot of work to be a voice actor too because in order to make ends meet uh kyle herbert has said in the interview that's like yeah i'm going to the dollar store a lot in order to like to eat a and so, like, and that's something to that, so, or, like, the anime companies, so, like, paying, like, the voice actors, like, so little, and that's the standard for the anime. Yeah, Steve Bloom voice acted in anime for, like, over 10 years, but he all did that on, like, the Saturdays on the weekend job while he had a regular job, too, which I think he was, like, a musician. He's just, like, luckily that he just pursued acting, voice acting as his full-time job and full-time career, and is able to do that as well, too. But, like, Steve Bloom's kind of, like, the exception to proof, uh, exception to proof's rule that, like, he, he, he it's just like really hard to be like a full time voice actor. Um, you should like look into doing local theater if you haven't already, and not to make money, of course, but for self satisfaction. I, I yeah, you can. I know, I should, I should do community theater. It's again my focus is my focus on Nas and Echo on Linda Quinn and my Joey Fine Lane Deer and like Phoenix and like Joanna Roberts. And so if I take time to do community theater, I would be surprised to find out that voice actors like they, they make make more at cons than they do the voice acting. So back to like so because even back in 2006, it was asked so frequently at like panels how to become a voice actor. One voice actor just has this whole routine, this whole routine, and said, you specifically have to go to Houston Community College. Remember, Houston Community College. Basically, he's telling his story and saying, this is how you become a voice actor, you specifically. And... And he said, and basically, he just happened to fell into like voice acting because he just knew someone that happened to be like a uh, sorting company or sort of working on a company called ADV Films. It used to be AD Vision Inc. and sort of like, but it just became ADV Films. Um, and now, and then it has to be it has to be twenty years ago, exactly, Kane. But like he said at the end of it, in back in two thousand six, he makes only eleven thousand dollars a year from voice acting, and he's been in a lot of animes. And working for ADD Films, they, there was a lot of anime released at ADD Films in the 2000s, early 2000s. There was a lot of anime released in the early 2000s. From Genion, from like, um, that was used to be Pioneer, and from Bandai, when back when Genion and Bandai used to release anime in the United States of America. Um, and then there was ADD Films, which I think changed the company's names to Shell Game, and they became Sentai Filmworks. And I think Sentai Filmworks is still around, it's now like a uh, HI a High Dive. But then Funimation just like we got bought and sold a couple of times, but didn't pay it for a while, and then like got absorbed by Crunchyroll, and so now Funimation is now Crunchyroll dubs. 
which I, I, I haven't been following the anime industry in America for a while and something like that. And to hear that, it's like, wow, Crunchyroll owns Funimation now? Okay. And then also Crunchyroll now owns Right Stuff. Rightstuff.com was used to be a great place I got bought anime from, and including porn games, honestly. Hey, but now like Crunchyroll owns that, so now like Crunch and uh, now rightstuff rightstuff.org or rightstuff like uh, uh, the anime uh, uh, the superstore of like America is now just like Crunchyroll store, and they stopped selling the porn games. Yeah, well. There's still like a porn game uh, in. There are still some uh, companies that sell porn games uh, here in America as well. So maybe Manga Gamer is still around. And then uh, Jazz USA is like still around. And some of the old uh, like porn games that like I did uh, it have uh, got like. It's like you can still get them off of like um, just say USA as well. too. That. Well, I'm reading hmm, the porn. Yeah, porn's porn. So like, and it, Kane, I just realized. I just realized, oh god, Kane, look at this. DC, Puerto Rico, and Territories. We were just talking about that when I mentioned Hawaii. Oh god, that's going to be the next session. Let's see what the Democrats say about that. And here's the thing. I'm, I'm reading the Democratic Party platform, and I mentioned porn games in the stream. Well, could there were some running games like a political stream where it's like, hey, um, <laughs> Uh, in before, like, it's terrible, yeah. Welcome to the Brian Summer Geek to a political streams where I mentioned, like, uh, some places where you can get some good porn video games. And on that note, let's take a self care break. Outro video time. Yes, this time I'm actually making an outro video instead of just having text on here. So, if you like the video, Press the button to give it a like. Helps out the video as well, too. If you do dislike the video, that button is there, too, as well. Oh, doesn't matter. Helps the algorithm. It helps the video out of the right way. Uh, you can also leave a comment if you disagree with something that I said, or you just want to say, hey, I like this video, or something like that. That will help out the video as well, too. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as well, too. Um, this, yep, getting those subs numbers up always helps as well, too. And uh, also, don't forget to share around the video to, like, all your friends uh, all your enemies on the social medias and be like hey check this out or listen to this or will you check out this person that's uh, rambling about so many different things yeah that will help the video as well too and also over on the sides of my face right now or covering the face as well too should be like the buttons for like over no, no over here for like to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also social justice out me if you haven't checked out that like uh the a channel it's a weekly uh live stream show the youtube live stream show that I, I i'm sitting around with a bunch of my friends a bunch of other anarchists and leftists and socialists to talk about like current events news uh politics feminism anarchism socialism communism and various other things even cats even like pop culture as well too and over on like the of here should be uh some videos as well too for like that i recommend you check out as well or it's over here or i don't know it around my face there's should be those buttons that you can click on as well too all right thank you for watching